Oh, well, hello there. So glad you joined. Today, I'm going to be doing a recipe from Dinner with Mr. Darcy, and I'm going to attempt to make a marzipan hedgehog. <gasps> so cute. In order to make our hedgehog, we need some juice. Technically, the recipe recommends rose water, or orange blossom water, or orange juice, which I could not find rose water, and I cannot have orange juice, so I have opted to try a passion fruit hedgehog. Then, you're supposed to ground some almonds up, so I just decided to use almond flour instead. Take some of the work out for me, because as I've said before, I'm a little lazy. Some slivered almonds to make his little spikes some powdered sugar to sweeten it up, and some dried cranberries for the eyes. Technically I asked for raisins, but you know, I have been reading Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies, so red eyes seem appropriate. And then, since we are doing something from Jane Austen's universe, we need to have a beer that has tea in it. The first thing you need to do is mix your almonds and your powdered sugar. And of course, have a sip of your tea. Which if anyone was wondering, this is a Pilsner with jasmine in it. One of my favorite teas. Silly old me, forgot to put my apron on before I started. Heavens to Betsy. Oh! <laughs> my dress will get all dodgy if I don't. Now, the next step in making your marzipan hedgehog is to add one teaspoon of juice at a time. I do believe this constitutes as a paste now. I have my little hedgehog here for inspiration. This is gonna set right there. And I'm gonna try to start and form the body of a hedgehog. I do believe this is now a solid body of a hedgehog. Now I'm gonna add my little eyes, and I think I'm gonna add a nose. Even though the picture doesn't have a nose, my little inspirational hedgehog, he has a nose. I wish I had something to make whiskers out of. I may have to search my cupboards to find some. Cheers! I went rummaging through my drawers to find something that could resemble a whisker. And I think, actually, jasmine tea leaves will do just the trick. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but I totally hulked out on these poor almonds. I have no idea how I'm gonna restore them. They're not big, but they're cute enough. They'll do for whiskers. He's coming in the oven for ten minutes. While that bakes in the oven, I thought it only proper to entertain you the way they used to entertain people during Jane Austen's day, which is to read you an excerpt from my favorite Jane Austen book, Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. Elizabeth Bennet had been obliged by the scarcity of gentlemen to sit down for two dances, and during part of that time, Mr. Darcy had been standing nearly enough for her to hear a conversation between him and Mr. Bingley, who came from the dance for a few minutes to press his friend to join it. Come, Mr. Darcy, he said. 
I must have you dance. I hate to see you standing about by yourself in this stupid manner. I certainly shall not. You know how I detest it, unless I'm particularly acquainted with my partner. At such an assembly as this, it would be insupportable. Your sisters are engaged, and there is not another woman in the room whom it would not be a punishment to me to stand up with. Upon my honour, cried Mr. Bingley, I never met with so many pleasant girls in my life as I have this evening, and there are several of them, you see, uncommonly pretty. You are dancing with the only handsome girl in the room, said Mr. Darcy, looking at the eldest Miss Bennet. Oh, she is the most beautiful creature I ever beheld, but there is one of her sisters sitting down just behind you who is very pretty and I dare say very agreeable. Which do you mean? And turning round, he looked for a moment at Elizabeth, till catching her eye, he withdrew his own and coldly said, She is tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me. I am in no humor at present to give consequence to young ladies who are slighted by other men. As Mr. Darcy walked off, Elizabeth felt her blood turn cold. She had never in her life been so insulted. The warrior crowed, demanded she avenge her honor. Elizabeth reached down to her ankle, caring not to draw attention. There, her hand met the dagger concealed beneath her dress. She meant to follow this proud Mr. Darcy outside and open his throat. But no sooner had she grabbed the handle of her weapon than a chorus of screams filled the assembly hall, immediately joined by the shattering of window panes. Panes. <laughs> Unmentionables poured in, their movements clumsy yet swift, their burial clothing in a range of untidiness. Some wore gowns so tattered as to render them scandalous. Other wore suits so filthy that one would assume they were assembled from little more than dirt and dried blood. Their flesh was in varying degrees of petrification. The fleshy, stricken, were slightly green and pliant, whereas the longer dead were gray and brittle. Their eyes and tongues long since turned to dust, and their lips pulled back into an everlasting skeletal smile. A few of the guests, who had the misfortune of being too near the windows, were seized and feasted on at once. When Elizabeth stood, she saw Mrs. Long struggle to free herself as two female dreadfuls bit into her head, cracking her skull like a walnut and sending a shower of dark blood spurting as high as the chandeliers. As guests fled in every direction, Mr. Bennet's voice cut through the commotion. Girls, pentagram of death! Elizabeth immediately joined her four sisters, Jane, Mary, Catherine, and Lydia, in the center of the dance floor. Each girl produced a dagger from her ankle and stood at the tip of an imaginary five-pointed star. From the center of the room, they began stepping outward in unison, each thrusting a razor-sharp dagger with one hand, the other hand modestly tucked in the small of their backs. And here is a lovely picture of the event. The little hedgehog is out of the oven. He's so cute. Now it's time to make some whipped cream to go with him. This recipe apparently is based off of Hannah, Hannah, glasses, the art of cookery made plain and easy from 1747. Now she suggests that you serve this little hedgehog with Heart shorn jelly. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. I know I have friends from England. Please correct me. Or a mixture of cream, wine, and orange juice. Or make green jelly in the traditional way. Color the jelly recipe given on another page. I couldn't find gelatin leaves, so we're not gonna do that. As I showed previously, we're gonna make whipped cream. And since I don't have wine, we are going to use some whiskey with a little bit of the passion fruit and just give it a whirl and see what happens. 
one must never waste good whiskey, in my opinion. So I'm gonna just put a shot of it in the whipped cream and see how it goes. This whiskey is Catscale Straight Rye Whiskey. And I totally recommend it. It is super yummy. You could see on the time lapse, but the whipped cream is literally spurting everywhere. Everywhere. Take a look. It's all over the walls. All over the walls. It's all over the whiskey. It even got into my beer. Did a little test taste of the whipped cream. It needs to be sweetened up a little, so I'm gonna put a little vanilla in. Much better. Maybe it's still. I might, I might add a little sugar though. I don't know. I like it sweet. Definitely messed up the whipped cream. It's not very whippy. I think I curdled it, I realize, by putting in the whiskey. I wasted good whiskey. <laughs> oh no. This is not savable. Like, look at that. Uh, I may have some extra heavy whipping cream in the fridge. I do not have any whipping cream left. I'm gonna try and serve it with jam. That's a little bit like jelly, right? So I have strawberry jam, rose jam, and thick preserves. We'll see how it goes. Technically, this recipe is supposed to be for the Netherfield Ball, but because we all need to social distance right now, I decided to do an indoor picnic with my hedgehog. I would like to read a fun factual thing that's in here about marzipan. This sweet meat is called March pan. In Tudor times, it was a lovely chewy texture, but it's nicer than raw marzipan. So it's actually not marzipan, it's March pan. And I would like to thank Kirsten Butterly for giving me the suggestion to do a book from this recipe. Next week, I will be doing my mom's suggestion from my unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. All right, I feel so bad having to cut this little guy up. He's so cute. Again, I'll give everyone a chance to name it because animals that look like poop should have a name. I think I'm gonna cut his butt. Sorry, little guy. Oh no. He's still very cute. So I'm gonna open my jellies. And by jellies, I mean jams. If I can. Oh my gosh. Ah! Oh no. Can I open any of them? Oh, crap. I don't think I can open any of my jams. Oh no. I'm gonna be right back. Oh, there's Toku. She's decided to join the picnic. I've got this nice little rubber thing up to open it up. <laughs> I did it! Ugh. Another one. So I'm gonna divide this March pan, not Marissa pan, as I was saying before, March pan up into three. I'm not going to be following the manners of decorum of Jane Austen's time when doing this. Just like she probably wouldn't lick her knife to then put in the jam. First one, we're gonna put some rose on it. Next one, I'm gonna do some fig. The last one, strawberry. Go with rose first. Mm. I'm pretty good. Now for the fig. Didn't really put too much fig jam on there. Mm. I think fig's my favorite so far. I can't really taste the passion fruit at all, to tell you the truth. Now, some strawberry. Strawberry is my least favorite. Fig definitely wins. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe this video and feel free to check out some other ones. And tune in next time to see me do a recipe from the unofficial Harry Potter book Recommendation of my mother, Linda Nara. Cheers!